Governor Chris Christie and explosive new allegations that he knew more about the George Washington Bridge traffic scandal than he has admitted. Now, ever since Bridgegate first broke, and remember, this is the story about Christie staffers scheming to close off parts of the bridge for petty political reasons, Christie's denied knowing anything about it in advance. But for weeks, reporters have been digging, looking for evidence of what Christie knew and when he knew it. On Friday afternoon, finally, what looked like a big scoop from the New York Times. In a letter, the lawyer for David Wildstein, the man who oversaw the lane closing, said this, I'm quoting here, evidence exists tying Mr. Christie to having knowledge of the lane closures. Now, when the Times story about the letter first appeared, it said that Christie, again quoting here, knew about the lane closings when they were happening and that he, Wildstein, had the evidence to prove it. Now, that's big news, right? Well, here's the possible problem. It's not exactly right. A full disclosure here, until two months ago, I worked at the Times, and to me, it is the finest newspaper in the world. But let's look a little more closely at the story here. David Wildstein's lawyer said that such evidence exists. He didn't say that it's in Wildstein's possession. The Times quickly revised its copy to say that. And of course, the web noticed that instantly. So the Times, which has a reputation for excellence, seemed to make a mistake. But here's the bigger problem. Chris Christie is, in some ways, the front runner for the Republican presidential nomination. Every single thing he says and does is pounced upon by the 24-7 internet and cable news cycle. Here's an example. Here's MSNBC anchor Alex Wagner reacting to the news right after the New York Times story was published. We have breaking news, a bombshell revelation from ex-Port Authority official David Wildstein, who carried out the lane closures on the George Washington Bridge. Wildstein says he has proof of gov that Governor Chris Christie knew about the plans to close those lanes while they were happening. The network eventually reported it more accurately, as did others, but it was reported like that on other major outlets at the time. <clears throat> on Saturday, Christie's camp attacked the New York Times for, quote, sloppy reporting and attacked Wildstein basically for being a bad guy, who, let's keep in mind, Christie appointed in the first place. This morning, the Times says it regularly updates stories. Nothing unusual happened here. And quoting now, they say, we do not note changes unless it involves an error. Joining me now is the Times reporter who wrote the Christie story in question, Kate Zernicke. Welcome, Kate. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Brian. So the first question has to be, wasn't that an error to say that the evidence exists and that he has the evidence? So the story said two things. The letter said two things. One, that... Uh, did, that the governor was lying when he said that he didn't know about these lane closures until after they were over and that evidence exists. The second thing he said, David Wildstein's lawyer said, was that the governor was lying about David Wildstein. David Wildstein has the evidence to prove that. So mm. the letter, what the letter says is David Wildstein says the governor is lying and he has evidence to prove that the governor was lying. So, yes, could we have made this more clear? Yes. Did we make it more clear? Yes. And it, it, it sounds like you're saying this is part of the typical process for breaking news on the web. Well, yeah, and ideally it would be more perfect, but look, this is, this is uh, you know, it was up for about 20 minutes. We went back. So you realized pretty quickly that it was uh, not perfect. You know what? Honestly, I was continuing to report the story. Mm. We had published the letter. We put the letter on the web, and then we read the letter and said, well, let, let's, let's make the lead a little more clear. I don't actually remember what the lead, ex what the lead first said, whether mm. it said, says he's lying and has the evidence to prove it, which is still, again, true. Um, because that is what Wildstein is saying. The governor lied. Isn't I have he the saying that he doesn't, he doesn't have the evidence no, to prove it? No, he's saying two things. He's saying, I have the evidence to prove the governor lied, and the evidence exists to say that the governor knew about the lane closings when they were happening. The he is saying, I have evidence to show that the governor lied. Mm -hmm. I have evidence to prove that. Don't you feel like that initial description, though, in that lead is an error that's worth correcting? You know, look, everything we know about this story, about Bridgegate, everything we know about, you know, time for some traffic problems in Fort Lee comes from David Wildstein. Mm. David Wildstein, when he got that email saying time for some traffic problems, said, got it. So David Wildstein knows what conversations took, took place before, what the Christie administration knew about this. Mm. So the fact that David Wildstein is now coming out and saying the governor lied is still a big, big news story. Shouldn't changes like that be uh, labeled, though, on the web so readers know something changed? You know, again, I don't remember what the original lead said, but I think the original lead said something about Wildstein says the governor lied and he has evidence to prove it. Mm -hmm. so. That's the one we read. Yeah, that's the one where... Right. And then later it uh, changed. The headline also changed. The headline got softened. Uh, now it says something like Christie linked to closures on, of, of lanes. Is that a typical newspaper process, or was there something more afoot there? No, I think actually that's a typical newspaper process. And in fact, you know, we, we change headlines on the web over the day not to reflect changes, but just to make them, you know, mm -hmm. make it look like it's something new, I guess. Um, but no, I think originally the headline, the news alert that went out still stands. It says that Wildstein mm -hmm. said, lawyer for Wildstein says the governor lied. So when you hear the Christie camp say this is sloppy reporting, it sounds like you vehemently disagree. 
Well, look, yes, I vehemently disagree. Look, I said this two weeks ago on your show. Every time the Christie administration is attacked, it goes back against the people who, you know, it, it attacks them. Yes, message. you said they make it about something else, namely media <laughs> bias is what you said then. Right, and since, you know, since, since the accusations by the mayor of Hoboken, they've made it about the mayor of Hoboken. You know, I've had uh, Christie administration officials call me with salacious rumors about her, and, you know, none of them turn out to be true. They're attacking mm. the messenger. Here's what uh, the Drudge Report put up uh, when your story was posted. It wrote, in, you know, in the Drudge Report, not, not a big fan of Christie to begin with. It says, he knew. And then after the story was updated, the headline changed with a question mark, he knew? Mm. Isn't that the problem with the, with the web uh, uh, journalism environment we live in, that as stories get clarified, headlines get softened, questions get risen like that? You know, I got to say, again, we put the letter up right away. If the Drudge Report doesn't read the letter and look at what it says, like, you know, that's... <laughs> I can't control the Drudge Report. Uh, it, it sounds like you uh, you read the comments from the Christie camp last night when they when they went this yeah, five I read the story today. This, this, these five bullet points, almost mm -hmm. like a listicle that belongs on BuzzFeed, <laughs> and one of them was the sloppy reporting line. It, to you, it, it, I hear you saying they're trying to change the story away from what Wildstein's actually saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the first point was that the New York Times was sloppy reporting. The rest of the points were that David Wildstein is, uh, I think they, I can't remember what they called him. Um, basically making him look like a volatile individual and they listed tumultuous, tumultuous and they thank you mm -hmm. um and the five things that they listed that he had done were all were all but one things that he had done before governor christie approved his hiring at the port authority so you have to again question why they're attacking david wildstein at this point does it make your job more difficult when they invoke <laughs> you when they say the times was sloppy uh does that make it harder for you to report and write um i don't want to give my age but i've been doing this a while and so i'm not exactly <laughs> unused to this this is not the uh, the toughest story you've had to uh, no, encounter by any no. measure. I remember a couple weeks ago when we talked, you said that sources were coming out of the woodwork now, more willing to talk on the record than they have been in the past. Is that becoming more and more true in the last two weeks also? That is true. And also, again, you look at the mayor of Fort Lee, who was afraid to talk about this back in September because he thought he'd be put out on a line and, mm -hmm. and the governor of his state would still be able to punish him. And he's, you've been seeing him out much more talking about this. I think he, he feels a little more free. Mm. Uh, and do you expect anything this week uh, in terms of Wildstein? Because sometimes, you know, when I was a reporter at the paper with you, sometimes I'd write stories and I couldn't say everything I knew on right. a certain day, but I knew more was coming. I mean, is this one of those cases where you wrote that original lead because you know more is coming? I think the original lead, again, saying that Wildstein said Christy lied, uh, is because, as I said earlier, mm -hmm. we know that Wildstein's a central figure in this case. So mm -hmm. while I don't have any particular bombshell to drop right now, I think we, <laughs> we know that Wildstein probably has, is a font of evidence for this. And the giant question now is, what is the evidence? Right, exactly. Uh, we, we now we, we saw uh, conservatives uh, commenting online again this morning that you know time is passing now without the evidence, so maybe we shouldn't be jumping to conclusions. Uh, do you think we will see any evidence anytime soon? Okay, so the subpoenas are due tomorrow. Um, I think a lot of people, including Christie's campaign manager, are p intending to plead the fifth or beg for more time. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I would have said it was going to be this week, but now with the delay in the subpoenas, I would say it's going to be a couple of weeks at least before we get hard evidence. So maybe I'll try to invite you back in two more weeks okay. if you're willing. Kate, thank you for being here. Thanks, Brian. <laughs>